Well, at New York Comic Con 2013, one of our admins had the opportunity to interview Star Wars author John Jackson Miller. So, without further ado, here is Ryan's interview with John Jackson Miller. Now that Kenobi has been out for a while, and, and you've received a lot of feedback in the novel, it's sort of been the years for making, how's it, uh, how's it feel? Uh, it feels the great. Uh, it, you know, the, uh, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. I am just, uh, I find it really gratifying. You know, I spent so long, you know, uh, thinking about the story over the years, and, you know, I, I know that it was a, a different kind of a... Star Wars story and like a western. very much a western, and I'm I'm thankful that uh, they took a chance on it at uh, Random House, and that readers were uh, willing to take a chance on something that seemed different. Again, you know, this is the rare Star Wars novel that has no space battles, no lightsaber battles, no Sith lords. You know. Uh, you know, I, I think yeah, every so often you'll hear from somebody who wishes it had all of those things in it. But, you know, at that point, you know, you're really kind of, you know, looking for a Star Wars Mad Libs book. You know, <laughs> with, a, with a generic space battle, exactly. a generic Sith, and all of that. And, you know, I guess my feeling was that there are plenty of books like that, or that have, you know, you know are, are set in time frames where that's more suitable. The time frame that our book was set in was absolutely you know, conducive to this kind of story. You know, we really cannot have Obi-Wan Kenobi running off everywhere. You really do not want to have you know, a whole lot of different you know, villains uh, chasing him to Tatooine, you know, like it's Gilligan's Island, uh, you know, all these people showing up. And it, it really, it really uh, is the case that you need to have, you know, a, a, if he's in exile as he is now, we kind of need to treat it like an exile. If he's in hiding, we need to treat it as if he's in hiding. That doesn't mean that we cannot, you know, have adventures. That does not mean that, uh, you know, the time goes smoothly for him. But uh, this is a different period in his life than before and he's got to learn to adjust and yeah i'm 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 happy that uh that readers followed us into this and uh and were you know willing to entertain uh, a story that looked at obi-wan in a different way what were some of the biggest challenges with kenobi well i i think it took me a while to figure out everything that had been written in the past about him in this period. I had done a lot of that footwork earlier, you know, in, you know, when I was thinking about making a graphic novel of it. I, I did a lot of that homework then, but there had been a number of stories that had come out since then, and so I needed to look at those. Uh, I needed to try to make sure that uh, everything that I wrote about the Tuscan Raiders was consistent with what had appeared in the past. Uh, we certainly elaborated a great deal on you know, what had already been written there. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, you know this, this was a story which, you know, undid no other stories. It, it, you know, acted in concert with other stories that had been done. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that always takes some work, but uh, it, uh, it did not take a lot of effort uh, for me to imagine uh, being, you know, a hermit on Tatooine as I wrote it in the middle of the winter time in Wisconsin, you know, and uh, and I kind of already have a feeling for uh, what that kind of life would be. Right. About you, meant, you briefly mentioned the Tuscan Raiders. This book seemed to have like the first like true like POV from a Tuscan Raider. Yeah, uh, I, I think somebody fun? I think somebody may uh -huh. have done a short story once right. years ago. But uh, yeah, it's definitely like very, an, it was an important thing. character. Yes, as an extended um, thing. Yeah. How fun was it to get into the mind of a Tuscan Raider? And how was, how much freedom did you have in creating it? Uh, I, I had culture? I had full freedom with the you know, with the provision that it had to right. match what had been written before. So we we did create you know a bit of a new mythology, you know, and it, and it may only be a mythology that applies to that one little group of Tuscans, right? Uh, because it's such a fragmented group of people. But all of that said. You know, the 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 Tuscans were some of the most alien characters that I've ever written. You know, 
they their mindset is so dark that it is very difficult to you know sympathize with them really uh, I wanted them to come across as you know you know pathetic in many ways you know the lives of some of them were pitiable to be sure but these are not nice people they they are you know their 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 outlook is in many ways deranged uh, it is it is uh, it is not it is not my intention uh, to make them seem like this uh, noble downtrodden group and I, I think we put that across yeah. that you know they're they're in the situation that they're in to a degree because you know they can't see any other way out that it's the way that they've been raised and they're stuck in it my favorite part of the novel was uh, the way you chose to show Obi-Wan's point of view yes. through the use of meditation. Yes. How did you come about deciding that? Uh, the idea for the meditations was uh, a later addition. The meditations, only one of them existed in the original graphic novel idea, mm -hmm. and readers could probably figure out which is the one that was part of it because right. it's central to the plot, mm -hmm. what happens during that meditation. The, the notion of the meditations, though, was really suggested by Jennifer Heddle, who is the fiction editor at uh, Lucasfilm. It was her notion that you know, it would be nice to have these little interludes every so often where we got to hear uh, Obi-Wan's point of view on things. Yeah, you almost made uh, the other characters depict Ben. Like, yeah. make Ben who he is. Yeah, we, we see him through their eyes. Right. And then, and then he is... He is able in his sections to tell us about the things that they simply cannot know about. But again, my assumption was that most readers already know what he knows, exactly. and so you know, uh, you know, where's the fun in that? <laughs> it's, I would rather have the readers fill in the blanks and you know put themselves in the minds of these characters who really know very little about what's going on out there. Uh, and uh, and have them find it out slowly, uh, and that's what ends up happening. Right. And then with uh, your Star Trek novella completed, what well, uh, what project are you working on next? Anything? I've I've got a, a number of different things, a uh, number of irons in the fire. There's nothing ready to announce yet. Okay. There is a there is a date on that novella that Star Trek Titan Absent Enemies, that is uh, February 24th, uh, is the release date on that, and. Yeah, as for the future, you know, I'm. It's going to continue to be a mix of uh, projects of my own, uh, like we just did the the Overdraft series that I did earlier this year. It'll, there will be more projects of my own and more licensed uh, material as uh, as I have time and as the opportunities present themselves. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to you know returning to the Star Wars world again. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate. It. All right. Awesome. Once again, we would like to thank author John Jackson Miller for taking the time to answer our questions. If you'd like to find out more about John, you can visit his website at farawaypress.com. There you'll find updates on all the upcoming comics and books that John has in the works, as well as upcoming convention events. For more Star Wars interviews, be sure to check out rocodepot.com. <laughs>